Hi everyone, it's me again. And welcome back to the final part of the Good Flight Type project. But I just want to say a big thanks to all of you. The support that I've been given lately has been uh, tremendous. Now if you're not subscribed yet, please consider doing so. My goal is to reach a thousand by the end of the year. And I have a really exciting project uh, planned for when that happens. So make sure you're subscribed. So something amazing happened during uh, this project and that is that GM Dream, the studio that designed the Good Fly Type, actually saw my videos and he contacted me. We had a nice chat and he told me that GM Dream studio is actually uh, quite small. He only consists of three people and only himself is full time. So basically all they do is they design the resin kits and they print out the original kit and then uh, they outsource the painting and the manufacturing to other companies, namely SH Studio. He told me that he started doing this full time since 2019 and he has designed every single kit since then. So that is some pretty impressive resume that he's got. But he told me that it was his first time designing a PG conversion for the Saku. So that's why some of the uh, fitting were quite problematic. And for this kit, he also said that um, the connection for the neck and head are supposed to be flush together. And you're not supposed to have a gap between them. And in order to do that, you have to shave a little bit of the uh, resin part inside the head to make the polycap fit. So back to this kit, when I usually paint, I usually stick with the Canon color schemes. So for this kit, um, it would be grey, but I thought that if I painted it grey, it wouldn't look as impressive. And since I've already done a black and white kit, I'll basically be more or less just redoing what I've done before. And I always want to challenge myself with new stuff. And I haven't painted a blue kit before, so that's my rationale for this color scheme. And I'm pretty happy with how the blues turned out. If you want to know the exact mixes of each colour, um, you can either check the description or you can watch other parts of my series. And I went with the sort of glowing orange sword, which is not canon with the series. But I thought it would kind of look interesting to break away from the blue kit. And it's very uh, contrasty and eye-catching, so that worked pretty well. I'm a little bit lost now, but somehow I don't want to be anywhere else with anyone else. And you've been getting on my very last nerve, but love hurts. So I'm going to say that it's okay with me to just let this be. I know, I know we've been on hold trying to work this out. And these times I know, I know Throughout it all You're not gonna let me down I'm holding on to All of you, baby I won't let you go no, no. I can't let you go All alone in the dark, dark, dark I can't let you go
So, my verdict for this kit. Let's start off with the positives. First, I really like how imposing this kit is. I think the size is easily the most impressive thing about this kit. And since the feet is so big, there's no concern of it falling over uh, from losing balance. So it's a very stable kit. And secondly, is this is something that applies across the whole range of um, GM Dream designs. It is that the designs are really detailed, but it's not super complicated like Yuja Lan's kits. So all the resin pieces are nice and big, and you can easily tell which part they are for. And it honestly makes it easier to mask and do color separations. So I never thought about this until recently, but I think Essex Studio kits are really beginner friendly. And the manual for this kit was very nicely designed and easy to follow. And I've mentioned this in my Kassar Tria video that SH Studio uses really sort of dense resin. So all the parts are really hard and really difficult to break or bend. But the negatives. First off, I tried to pose this kit, you know, give it some like really awesome action poses. But I found out the skirt armor doesn't actually move because of the uh, energy pipes. So you can't really bend the legs, so you, you're stuck with standing poses really. Also you can't really turn the head because the energy pipes again, it prevents the head from moving side to side. And overall the sacro frame is kind of loose uh, in the joints. I noticed this in the arm um, joints and the feet, so you can't point the shield forward. And I noticed that the, the feet actually move very easily, so you might actually want to tighten the joints to make it more stable. But yeah, you aren't really gonna give it any action poses for this guy. And secondly, I feel that this kit was sort of very haphazardly made. For example, there were quite a lot of 3D printer marks that were not cleaned up well. So basically when GM Dream printed the original kit, it would have been 3D printed and the studio will have to basically sand all the surfaces down because 3D printers, they have the sort of like lines and patterns on the surfaces. You would know if you come across or 3D printed a kit or a part before. And like I said in the unboxing video that like some of the accessories are like they feel like they haven't been giving much thought to it. Like the energy cables, the LEDs that the instructions don't tell you where to go. And the worst of all the decals. They are literally the same as the normal goof decals from their older kit. So they didn't give any goof fly type specific decals at all. So I ended up using a mixture of Dalin decals, Bobby Mio, G Rework and Del P decals. But I hope you guys enjoyed this series. Let me know what you think. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Like I said, I have a really awesome project uh, for a thousand subscribers. So stay tuned for that. And enjoy the rest of the video.